codes or um, passwords for any electronic devices. Um, I would liken this to any sort of a consensual type of search that may have taken place where someone may give consent to search and then revoke that consent, but any information that's already been obtained in regards to that search is and should be allowed to be utilized by law enforcement. So I would just stand on my motion as well as what I have just um, argued here this morning. Right. Well, the court does not view any concrete judiciable controversy existing here today. The people are on notice of the defense revocation of any um, uh, previously signed waivers, and we'll just see what transpires in the case. The next motion. Your Honor, uh, on DO3, I think we stand on our motion. The only thing we would add is if the court's going to grant the proposed order that we submitted, uh, we would want the Colorado State Public Defender's Office to be added to that. There's a typo that that entity was not on that. Which so motion is this? DO3, Your Honor. And I have these right here, but is that uh, notice of representation? That's motion to limit pretrial public comment. This is kind of the starting of the. Have the people had a chance to see the proposed order on this subject? We did, and we noted in our response. Good morning, Honor, Reginald Short. We noted in our response that the order by application only applied to the people in that process. I think the rules of professional conduct are clearly spelled out in terms of the ethical obligations for the respective parties as amended and included for specifically the prosecuting attorneys. We're objecting to anything that extends beyond the rules of professional conduct. We support the identification and addition of the public defender's office to the rule that's proposed by the defense. The proposed order provided by the defense, do you believe that tracks the ethical rule exactly, or are there deviations? We did not, and in our response, we identified what we believe to be the correct language. We'd ask the court to adopt the order as amended to reflect the specific language in the rules. Any response, Mr. Archambault? No, you are. All right. Um, in concept, I'm granting your motion, but I'm only granting it contiguous with the actual language in the ethical rule. So I'll ask the people to provide the court with a form of order which tracks the rule exactly, and I'll sign that. Mr. Archambault, your next motion. Your Honor, we'd ask to address DO4, and we would just stand on our motion. And that's, Your Honor, notice of representation, demand for notice of 411 uh, procedures. I will make note that the Public Defender's Office has already entered its appearance and is representing the defendant. Beyond that, is there anything else to do on that one? Your Honor, Your Honor, I guess the only other thing is we're asking for some notice if there is going to be an attempt to do a 411 uh, to have contact uh, with our client. Ms. Veeman? Uh, Your Honor, I would agree to that. If we have um attempt to make any attempts for rule 16s or 41 ones we would notify you guys all right your next motion mr archambault uh your honor it's do5 um we filed that motion um the prior court um, the county court granted that motion mr allen didn't object um but the prosecution filed a a, a response to 05 in which they're seeking a protection order um we don't object to a protective order of some sort. We we would just like to know what, I guess, what the orders of the court are in regards to that document. Anything to add on that point? No, we're certainly not objecting to the release of the information to the defense. We're not objecting generally to the unsealing of future processes, and specifically just to ensure that the affidavit itself is kept within the custody properly of the defense team, as opposed to the facility where obviously the defendant is housed. Do the people yet have a sense of how long it's going to be before it might be um, unsealed? We're fine as we move forward from this point, allowing that to be unsealed. Okay. So are you making a formal request for unsealing today? Yeah. Any response to that? Yeah, we would object to it being unsealed at this time. And the rationale? <clears throat> um. I think due to the sensitive nature of this case and the extensive uh, media coverage, we're concerned about um, Nick Aldridge's right to a fair trial. Um, if the affidavit is released and then, and <clears throat> it is out there in the public. 
I'm going to unseal the uh, search warrant or the arrest warrant affidavit. I am entering a protective order, but I don't know how much good that'll do. I don't know if um, it's applicable or moot at this point. Judge, if I can ask one request of the court, and this is totally my fault, but if we could have the court enter that order as of tomorrow, we want to provide an opportunity. We did meet with the victims that were able to uh, appear yesterday and discuss obviously the nature of the proceedings. We wanted to give any of those individuals a chance to be prepared for what might be released as part of that arrest affidavit. Certainly giving us even just this afternoon might help facilitate that. All right, I'll grant that request. It'll be unsealed to close of business tomorrow, December 7th. I am entering a protective order. The terms of that protective order is that the defense is allowed to use and share this affidavit within the defense team and within the public defender's office and with any third party expert that's been brought in as part of the litigation in this case, but no further than that. Obviously this becomes somewhat moot once the unsealing occurs tomorrow. Anything else on that point, Mr. Archambault? There. What do we have next? Your Honor, uh, DO6 and uh, the defense would stand on our motion. And DO6 is which one? Deals with uh, expert disclosures, Your Honor. People's response, Ms. Veeman? <laughs> Your Honor, um, the people have filed a written response on this as well. I would just note that it, I believe this is extraordinarily premature. This is dealing with disclosures in preparation for trial. There's deadlines that are um, requested in this for uh, nine disclosures 90 days prior to trial. Um, I, I, my position is that this is um, it's premature for us to be dealing with deadlines and timelines on expert disclosures at filing of charges. I do believe this is premature and I'll take it under advisement. However, I am gonna require the defense if they are requesting a specific discovery under the discretionary disclosures portion of rule 16 to have to file an issue specific motion at the appropriate time. If you're asking for a Shrek hearing on any particular expert that's been endorsed, you'll need to file a very particularized Shrek motion at the appropriate time. At arraignment, we can discuss those time periods for the filing of motions. For now, counsel should assume that statutory and rule-based time limits apply. And if you need additional time, we can discuss at arraignment those changes to the rule. Anything else from the defense? Not on that issue, Your Honor. Any other issues? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, DO7, we've taken care of as a demand for a preliminary hearing, I believe. Um, DO8 is an uh, objection to um, law enforcement proceeding to get ex parte search warrants or court orders. Do you have any legal authority uh, supporting this proposition? Yes, Your Honor. We'd cite the court to tattered cover uh, the city of Thornton, 44 P 3rd. 1044 at pages 1060 to 1061, um, Colorado Supreme Court. Um, I believe that's 2008, but I can't read my notes, Your Honor. I'm sorry about that. Uh, also, um, key v people at 865 P second, uh, 822, Colorado Supreme Court in 1994, and also Mix Aldridge's fifth and 14th amendments, the United States Constitution, and then Colorado Article 2, Section 25. Um, the, the issue that, that the defense has, Your Honor, is this is a scenario where bond has been denied at the current time until the proof of resumption grade here. And so the normal reasoning for ex parte search warrants and court orders um, where the defendant may be able to secrete, alter, destroy evidence is not present here. That's our position. Um, and that the reason we point the court to tattered cover is they talk about it's a narrow exception when there should be ex parte warrants and court orders sought. People's response? Your Honor, I would also rely on my written response on this. Um, as I think has been noted from the onset of, of today's proceedings, this is an ongoing investigation. There is a lot going on in this case. 
to hamstring law enforcement from being able to obtain lawfully obtained search warrants supported by probable cause, I think um, would be improper. There is authority for the uh, police officers and law enforcement to obtain search warrants to have a court review for probable cause. Um, so I would ask that the court deny the defense motion in its entirety. I am in fact denying this motion. We will utilize our usual procedures for law enforcement to obtain warrants and the court will not deviate from that. Your Honor, if we could go to DO9 next. Um, that's most reserve evidence in a nutshell, make sure it's not altered. I, I think the sticking point, if I, if I may, Your Honor, is uh, law enforcement notes um, uh, that may exist. Um, and, and what we would cite the court to is people be Denton at 91 P3rd 388, uh, Colorado Supreme Court 2003. Um, that, that seems to be the problem between our motion and the prosecution's response. Uh, we are asking that law enforcement be ordered not to destroy notes that exist um, because we believe that we should be the ones deciding if that has relevant information or not as it relates to the defense of Nick Aldridge and his constitutional rights. Mr. Short? Which actually, I think that's the least contested part of the response. I think anything that's obviously a substantive recital of witness testimony, we would agree and certainly request the court to order that law enforcement should preserve that. As I read the defense motion, it also included all emails and text messages. Our concern with that is, as the court can imagine, there's a tremendous amount of exchange of information, the vast majority of which, frankly, has nothing to do with either witness testimony or potential recitals of what a witness may have told a member of law enforcement. We have scheduling requests for different meetings. We have victim contact in terms of establishing you know, victims' information. We have a lot of things that would fall, I think, outside the parameter of information that is appropriate or required by case law. We specifically object to any ordering of information that doesn't relate to substantive recitals of what a witness may have told a particular witness. The other thing that concerned us in the context of this motion was the demand that it appeared testing not occur unless there's been some sort of preview with respect to the defense of any of the evidence. And specifically, where I would envision this being an issue, obviously we're making active efforts to analyze what are potentially hundreds of blood or DNA samples. And as part of that process, it is common that laboratory personnel would take pictures to identify the item itself in its existing capacity and then attempt to take swabs or swatches of those items for further testing and analysis, just because it's not feasible if we're talking about large items of clothing or things like that, to segregate those into you know, their entirety for evaluation or examination. And so the traditional process has always been laboratory personnel take those pictures, certain of the evidence is available for the defense to review, but I don't think it's appropriate that the court order that no portion of that testing occur prior to the normal flow of being able to take those swabs or swatches simply out of a desire to not further obfuscate or delay the proceedings. Any response? Your Honor, uh, maybe I'm a little unclear, but we, we do object to consumptive testing occurring of some sort without getting notice of it. Um, so we object to that. Um, I, I guess that's what I'd say about that. Well, each party is allowed to investigate and prepare their portion of the case in privacy. If we have a piece of physical evidence that is subject to being consumed during the laboratory testing of it, every lab in the state, as far as I know, has procedures for notifying the parties of that danger. They also have procedures for dividing the sample and making sure that portions are retained so that all sides could have access to it. At this early stage in the litigation, I do not intend to enter any particularized order, but I grant leave to all parties to raise any issues that may concern them at a future date. The people are on notice of their due process obligations to preserve evidence, and if they were to test physical evidence and consume it, then they act at their peril. I'm aware not only of what Mr. Short mentioned, which would be 
biological samples, but for example, a frequent point of contention that comes up in firearms cases is whether the firearm may be fired as part of the testing without the defense being present. In my experience, the prosecution usually claims that the firing is not consumptive or destructive in any way. I do not plan to hamper the defense's discretionary decision-making in that regard. I'll simply note that I have seen cases where that point may or may not be debatable. So the court is not granting your request today, but if once you get discovery, specific items of concern come to your attention, you're granted leave to re-raise the issue. Anything else from the defense? Your Honor, the last one I think is, uh, I would jump to D11. As I said, D10 is moot. Um, D11 has to do with <clears throat> um, records um, about visitor logs um, and Mix Aldrich. People's response? Just not objecting to the retention and segregation of visitors' logs. I think the court has already signposted that there is obviously an opportunity for both sides of the equation to develop the cases they see fit. The only concern that the people have with respect to what I observed in the defense motion, what they refer to as incident logs. So incident logs by pattern and practice here can refer to a variety of note taking that our deputies may engage in to include things such as if the defendant were to engage in some type of conduct that they felt they needed to report or to document, they would document those on an incident law. As the defense is requesting segregation of those, and as the court can anticipate, some of those types of events could be of significant interest to the people's investigation. And so we're asking the court to grant in part the defense request to segregate anything that identifies either visitors in a professional capacity or obviously members of the defense team, but to deny the request simply as to incident logs that would document the defendant's behavior as required pursuant to the El Paso County Jail policies. Their motion also mentioned medical records. My experience with the contract medical provider at the jail is that they are fully aware of their obligations to maintain the confidentiality of medical records. Mr. Archambault, do you have a particularized concern in that regard? No, no, Your Honor, especially if the prosecution is agreeing with it. Our, our only concern is, is when the court grants it, defense team, the term defense team would also include uh, experts and things like that that are, are brought in by the defense. And we concur. Okay. So to make sure I'm clear, the people are agreeing to an order to segregate visitor logs as well as medical records? Yes. Okay. That is granted. I am not granting the request to segregate incident logs. Does that address the entirety of your motion? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Anything else? Not from the defense, Your Honor. Anything else from the people? It's only to provide notice concurrent with the issue that's litigated this morning. We will be filing a Rule 16. We'll follow the court's orders, obviously, with respect to coordinating with the defense as to the collection of those logs. All right. Anything else from you, Mr. Allen or Ms. Roy? No, Your Honor. Okay. The defendant needs to sign the protection orders before he leaves. My staff will provide that paperwork to the defense now. This concludes the hearing this morning in this matter. Division 21 will next resume after a short recess with its regularly scheduled docket. Court is in recess.